Guess who's back? Josh is back. The triumphant return. Yes. Hi, everyone. Back to his amazing holiday in Kos that he had the best time ever, didn't you? Well, I had a holiday. <laughs> have a holiday. Maybe take out all the adjectives. I can't even speak. Adjectives. And, you know, he's still got... But I'm back. That's what Matt Yeah, is. he's back. But, yeah, but, uh, a thank you to Matt for stepping in last month. Yeah, big Champions. thanks, big thanks. Not, not only just for stepping in and helping out, but I thought he did really well. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it would be great to have him back at some point. Yeah, and hopefully, we'll, like, maybe, like, Mania or Rumble or something Yeah, like we'll, we'll fit in him some, somehow, if he wants to do it. Yeah. I think he would. Um, the only deaths of, of, of... I had to find out his name literally just now. Uh, a guy called Rick Bogner. Uh, Weird name, but there you go. Uh, he's mainly known for being the fake Razor Ramon back in like the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. I don't know much more about him, but you know, a death, a death, a death, and yeah, we will dedicate the podcast here like we do for the yeah. others. So. Um, as usual, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Music, uh, on Twitter and Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. So wherever you want to find us, you can find us and enjoy listening to us. Yes. So Hell in a Cell, Hell in a Cell, two thousand and nineteen. Yes. Or as I like to call it. The, we didn't bother making any efforts because we had too much of the shit going on. Well, the, okay, well, just so people know, we didn't watch it together. We no. didn't watch it live together. Um, but just by that comment alone, maybe up until the end, I think we're going to have very different perspectives. Of yep, I think we are. So, um, so we're pretty sure we can get out of the way very, very quickly, because I did not watch it, but it was Natalia versus Lacey Evans, Lacey Evans wasn't it? So yeah. uh, apparently it was just a standard match and... Natalia gave a woman's right or some shit like that. That, that was it. That was the weird thing. Oh, yeah, they shown that this is what happened on the pre-show kind of thing. And I was like, all right, let's, let's just see who wins for the sake of this podcast. Mm. And she won by the sharpshooter and then gave her the woman's right afterwards. Give her the woman's right then. Yeah. Now, to me, yeah. if Lacey had attacked her and then Natalia did it, it would have made more sense. But I thought, if they just done a Natalia heel turn, they then explained mm. that it led to a last one with standing match on the following night's Raw but it just I don't know it didn't seem like a legitimate heel turn to me and there was another thing that happened in the show that, which was similar which we'll get to later but yeah like I say it was just one of those kind of quickly yeah, put together just things didn't, didn't care but see just before we get into it I thought in general we, I know we do like ratings at the end I thought in general for like you say a show they didn't really give two shits about um, because I was going into it like going right they've had an amazing yeah because we only had four show, four matches predicted uh, oh. four matches uh, He's put on the card now, but yeah. our predictions <laughs> yeah. it, it fucks up our predictions because we could only predict four matches so yeah. we were you know yeah. incidentally though uh, literally before I went to bed that, that Sunday night I was on Facebook and I think YouTube got a channel called WWE Now yeah. and they announced three of the matches as well as uh, the tag team being turned into turn a tornado. Yeah. And I, I thought, it's too late to tell you guys now. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. But, yeah, I just thought, yeah, they had, a, it was been an amazing week for wrestling fans more yeah, than Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of content. Yeah. I mean, AEW's Smack, here. Um, yeah, AEW enjoyed, well, um, Raw was, weren't, weren't three, yeah. too bad. SmackDown was all right, although I'm pissed off with the Kofi Lesnar thing. However, the Kane stuff was pretty yeah, decent. The, the Fox um, and stuff. NXT, NXT was, was great. Balor, Ka- uh, Champo, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was all good. So, yeah, I was kind of going into, like, because they've kind of forgotten about this pay-per-view, you know, in my book, if you've got a week like that, the pay per views needs to be the one that stands out. That's the finishing touch. Yeah, and I just thought they hadn't end. made a lot of effort into it. Really However, for something they didn't really give much detail to, what I saw, the majority majority of it weren't too bad. I mean, there were some good points, and we will get into yeah. it right about now. Right about now. Um, so, first match. It was this the, was the match of the night, and I'm going yeah, to I'm going to go on record, record, and I think it's one of the best openers I've ever seen. Yeah, it was a great it match. It was phenomenal. This was the best part of the entire evening. It, Sasha and Be- Becky in the cell tore that place down. Every single moment was important. It never lagged. It never got boring. There was loads of inventive spots. There was the double knees through the table. Mm-hmm. There was the double knees, uh, I think it was off the rope. There was the drop kick when she was sitting on the chair on the outside. Genius. It was so great. Um, there was so much stuff going Even when tacking, starting it off before the cells even dropped... 
everything they did, even down to the final finish where she Beck slows onto the, the chairs, and that's how Becky retains. Yeah, everything about this match was absolutely incredible, and the girls should be so proud of that match because it's one of the best I've seen. It's one of them where when it started. Um, when, I will say that when they did the whole thing with the cell coming down and it, it, Sasha attacked before you know even got to go, I thought, oh, you're gonna you're starting it off exactly how the first one was the cell match did. I th- you just instead of Sh- Sasha getting attacked, yeah, she did the other way around. So I thought, oh, I hope this doesn't just go exactly the same but I, way. But I like that because it kind of harks back to going, well, Sasha's been in the cell before. Becky yeah. hasn't, so she's took what happened yeah. last time. I thought, you know what? I'm going to use that. That's a good point. That's a good, that's a so, good way of seeing it. Uh, I did, at the start, like, you know, they, the cell finally came down and then, you know, I think Becky fought way back into the cell. With few, yeah, she like, um, wouldn't let the, the guy door. lock the door. Then eventually she locked it on her own accord and then used the chain to beat I, the shit out of Sasha. I liked that a lot. Yeah, it goes to her character space and, no, I'll lock her in. Well, at you first know, I thought she's checking taking the chain because she don't want the door to be locked right she's going to use it as a weapon uh, I will as soon as she took the chain away I thought they could keep the door open for the entire match so Bailey might we, have been either Bailey shit. or they can get out yeah. and, and shit will happen yeah. but then I was to say she locked her own accord which was kind of like oh, alright but okay um, and it, you know they did start doing some spots but I began to at first watch it of like right they're not being as Hard hitting is obviously a male hand in the cell would, but I've, I've, I expect that. But like you say, once they got the ball rolling, they were going nuts. It, it was great. And what really they used me- everything those ladders, chairs, kendo sticks, tables, loads of parts of the ring, the steel steps, the cage was used to put good effect as well. Yeah. They literally threw everything about the kitchen sink. What impressed me, I think the opening promo to the whole pay per view was like saying, We've had this structure in the company for over 20 years. And they did stuff that I don't think that I've seen in Hell of a Cell match before. So to be that clever to do stuff and it's that hard, creative. Yeah. And it's hard to come up with stuff these days. After every, time I go years, in, yeah. every time I go into a gimmick match, I'm thinking, what can they pull out in the bag this time? It's like whenever Kofi's at a rumble, it's like, what can he do this time? It's, really and it's like things are running out. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's like, if they come out with something interesting and inventive, I'm like, fair enough, because it's fucking hard. You see, the problem with the, like, the chamber, for example, is all you can really do creatively is maybe smash someone through a pod. Hmm. I've always thought with the chamber, like, look, you are, if you can throw it into storyline, you can go outside the chamber. You know, why don't you throw that into the story? It mixes it up a bit. Mm. Um, but yeah, they, yeah, they did the, uh, even the bit with the door, she used the gap in the door to yes, slam Becky's, Becky's arm. arm yeah. Brilliant. Um, I, I like the fact as well, they were setting things up for something like a certain, like Sasha might be setting it up to get Becky, but then Becky would fight back or yeah. vice versa. And you forget about it. Like that chair that's wedged in the, sh- the cell. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot the, about that. The then. one that really made me go, oh, holy shit, was when the first meteora to Becky into the ladder that was up against the cell. Yeah. It sounded like a car crash. Yeah, I mean, look, I saw it on the replay. Luckily, Sasha's knees went through the gap, but her shins went straight yeah. on that step, and it looked like it hurt. Uh, but that's it. They, they, were, they were throwing caution to the wind, which... You kind of have to... I know it's like, oh, we're scripted, whatever, but even so, going into that kind of match, you have to have the mindset of, ah, oh, fuck it. Mm. If I get hurt, I get hurt, kind yeah. of thing. Uh, the, the winner... It did shock me in the sense of I didn't predict that. I no, I think, I, think, I think all of us predicted Sasha. But yeah, but I wasn't angry about it. I was kind no. of like... Yeah. I, I, no, yeah, because I... Maybe it was the way the match went down... But yeah, I was just like, uh, yeah, I was at that point. I was so invested in how well these girls have done that I literally didn't care who won at yeah. that point because it's like it doesn't matter. No, there's no losers here. Yeah, it's I, I'm very, very impressed. I think it was one of them where I thought th- there's a small part of me that thinks Becky's reign needs to end soon. So maybe that's probably yeah, right yeah, it does. Sasha. But we'll say that about Seth as well. So. Yeah, but I also thought with Sasha as well, it's a ridiculous thing to think, but the fact that she's only just kind of made the peace with WWE. I just thought this might be one of their kinds. Yeah, because like, it's like, here, you know, she, she went away because she didn't get what she wanted and she came back because she's obviously sorted out a contract and a deal to get what she wants, mm-hmm. which is that kind of stuff. And twice now she's gone against her and lost the title. So, like, how many more chances is she going to get? Well, well, to me, we could just be wrong. To me, she might be just professional enough of going, this isn't about championships. This is just, she wants a little bit My more position. respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think it wasn't the, the fact that they lost well it wasn't it wasn't the fact that they lost the women's tag titles quite early on in their reign I think they just thought the fact that she thought we can do a lot more with these titles 
means that you, you're taking me for granted. I'm a much bigger player in this game than you think. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't watched the Chronicle yet, but I know those are the aspects of the right. But, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, the opening match, absolutely incredible. Great best, best part of the night, one of the best openers I've ever had. It's honestly seriously proud of the girls. Have, however, I thought, maybe not to the same calibre, but I thought the next match came a close second. Um, yeah, this, the, yeah, this was a good match. Um, I really enjoyed it. Really, it, enjoyed yeah, it was a good match. I wouldn't say it was like five star or anything, but yeah. it was a great match, and I enjoyed it. And this was, for me, was probably the last solid match for the night. Um, um, after that, it kind of tailed off for me, which we'll get into. Yeah. But as far as this match is concerned, yeah, it was paced quite well. Um, it, everybody had their moments to shine. We. We had Brian being worked on and everything, Reigns with the spear through the table, that kind yeah. of stuff. It was all decent stuff. Uh, Eric and Luke looking like absolute monsters. Yeah. Um, enjoyed all that. It all went really well. And the finish, I quite liked where it was... What was it? Was it a super, 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 super and knee and then, and then the spear? And that was good night. And was it Luke took the pin, wasn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I like that. And they have a hug at the end as well. That, really? that was weird. Because when the handshake, was like, no. Is that enough? And Sarah's like... They're going to turn right heel. I was like, nah. Of course I, I did briefly think that. Was like, nah. Because I then did but think, with the hug, and then Brian smiling the face, and then a handshake afterwards, it's like, maybe they're turning in face. Yeah, but, I, th- I think they're going face. But Brian. not the yes, yes, no, no. No, no, no. I think they just, I think they want to build him as this badass face. Yeah, now. keep the, uh, at one point, yes, bring the yes man persona back. But it needs to be natural. Yeah, and wait for it. Because yeah. the more you wait, the better yeah. it will be when it comes It needs to be natural. Because but, uh, if it's not, then it just it feels like, oh, his face, we have to do it. No, he doesn't. Well, two things I thought was when they you know, they did the handshake and whatnot, and they went up the ramp. Brian went first, and he seemingly, obviously now I just know he's selling the injuries, he seemingly collapsed at the Yeah, I saw it. And I thought, is this going to be a sudden, like, Roman's like, oh my God, what's up with him? Medics and uh, a new storyline with that. But another part where he's thinking, oh, soon, you know, have the hug, have, you know, celebration, handshake. As soon as Roman turns around, then nail him in the back. Just like, say like, oh, you know, we did our deal. It's done, like, still don't like you kind of thing. But I'm, I'm happy with the way it went down. Yeah. The way the match was just portrayed, I mean... It was paced very well. Well, yeah, but it, just as a character thing, because it never made... Anyone in that match looked weak, uh, no. which was a, it's a hard thing to do nowadays. But especially yes. when you've got four people in the ring as well, it's not just two. Yeah, uh, I think it had, the smart thing was it showed Harper and Rowan as a well-oiled unit and just dominant, but it shown Roman and Daniel as persevering mm. and, and, and just like, yes, we're taking an ass whooping, but we're still going to give you a fight. Um, I liked the uh, you know many many people think. Uh, um, that character work is mainly on promos. Yes and no. You know, it is mainly on promos, but you can do character work in the ring, whether it be... It depends on your character. Yeah, it's little, like, tidbits. And like, if you're stuff. Orton and you're in the sicko thing, yeah. yeah, that's when you do put the screwdriver through Jeff's ear, or if you're the Undertaker, yeah. you know, the sitting up and all that. But just, you know, the, the verbal stuff from Rowan, yeah. I was like, like right, yeah, you're putting yourself over as, like, you're not someone to be messed around with. And then just kind of... And Luke wasn't following in like he was his bitch. He was his it equal. Was, it, yeah, but yeah, it was more like... Rowan knows what we, he, we're doing, and I respect him. And there was a bit where he just slid in and I think took Brian out. And then he stood there for a minute with his like vacant look, which was awesome. And then it kind of looked like he was just waiting there for Rowan's orders. And I loved that. It was kind of almost like... A soldier, kind of like, I, I'm... What's next? Yeah, like, who should I attack next? What do you want me to do? But, um, yeah, the, everyone looked strong. I love the fact that... It, I was worried about Tornado, because I thought, the refs are not going to know where to be. Yeah. Do you know what? Cameraman's going to be everywhere. It's so long, for instance, to be on a Tornado match, I actually forgot what the stipulation meant. <laughs> <laughs> it said Tornado match. Like, What's a Tornado yeah, match? No tag. And no then the missus went, I think it means that there's no tagging. Mm. I was like, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I, just, I just forgot. I, it's been a long time since we've had a Tornado I, match. I kind of had to remind myself as well, it was like... Okay, that means no count outs and no DQs either, which was great. I mean, like say, they took the barrier apart. That's a bit more flavour. Yeah, uh, the commentator table thing. The Hurricanrana off the commentator table didn't see coming. Yeah, um, and then the spear followed it. Yeah, there was a lot of times where it's either selling or, or botches where they hit a move and they look genuinely hurt. Mm. If they're botches, I hope they're okay. If they were selling it, then kudos to you. Yeah, you know, I bought into it. Yeah. So yeah, very solid match. Yeah, really I really good. enjoyed it. And you know, you see, this is where the theme is going for me. From that point on, I was like, all right, this is actually a good show. Yeah, so far. Yeah, yeah I was. I was at the point. Okay, it's looking promising. Do you think that was the last solid match for you? Because 
to a degree, you know, after that, the matches that weren't announced or developed in a storyline kind of took place. No, because I was going in with an open mind of, right, well, we haven't got ones that are announced, and I'm going into it the way I go into NXT or AEW. I don't watch it week to week, so I'm going in with these matches that I don't know about the characters, and I'm just going to go in and see what they do. Yeah. And not think too much of it. Yeah. And, no, it was just down to everything else after that just kind of cause problems and issues for me in different ways so um, we'll get into it oh, with each one. so what was next was Orton Ali now this match the ending was good I liked it pretty much all the way through the, the ending was good but it was a, for the rest of it it was just a standard Orton type Flandy Orton match it didn't nothing really mm. stood out to me it was literally the ending where he went for the RKO and Ali's inventiveness of doing the handstand to get oh, out of yeah, it. Right, I and then he went to dive through the ropes and got hit with the RKO and got pinned. Uh, but I like the fact that Orton kind of looked at him and pointed at kind of like, show respect. He's like, okay, this kid's show got some chops, fair enough. I like that he's invented. Yeah. I, uh, but yeah, apart from that, that closing segment, the rest of the match was just as advertised, as you would expect an Orton match to go. Yeah, yeah. it would cut the bits from Ali, but again, it's stuff that was expected I, from I, Ali. I know it wasn't really much to, to write home about, but. Yeah, it was a match that I, it would, you know, some matches uh, I do kind of like watch, and then every now and then I'll do something on my phone. This one I kind of thought, you know what, the way it's going, I'll pay attention to this. Um, they, they explained that it was made on the pre-show, which is obviously WWE's way of like, hey, you want to know about this shit, watch the pre-show. Yeah. And um, they probably should have explained more, it's all about kind of, I uh, think the commentators did mention it, of Orton kind of going to Ali you've got to know your place, you're not there yet, and I'm going to remind you of that. Mm. But Ar- Ali was selling the moves like a soldier, like, he yeah, really, was... like, that one especially, like, into the ring post, and that bruise just yeah, appeared that bru- straight that, away. That bruise awful. And I, the one thing I actually do like is the camera angles have changed slightly, so even at that point, they zoomed in on, yeah, the, bruise. on the bruise when he was in a, in a, hot, in a lock. I was like, they don't usually do that kind of stuff. So I like the fact they've kind of freshened up their camera angles. It happened a lot in SmackDown, and I was quite impressed well, with it. To the point as well, I think that's when he zoomed in, Orton had him in some submission hold. And I think like 30 seconds later, just to add a bit more into touch injury and keep the submission in place, Orton whacked him in the ribs. And knowing that bruise was genuine, even I was like, oh, you, you son of a bitch, that's going to hurt. But the way I took it is that, that Ali, again, did what Becky and, and Sasha did, and just threw a caution to the wind, which cruiserweights do with great grace and style of like, I'm on a pay per view, I'm on TV, I need to prove yeah. myself. So he did. So, in a sense, it, you know, usually I'd say stuff like Ali needed Orton because Orton's got the, yeah, the what's the word we for? Um, the experience. Mm. Which he does, and, and, and it did help, but Ali in, in return made Orton look really strong. Yeah, he did. I'm not. I'm not saying take anything I know away you're from dumping on the match. No, yeah. I'm not dumping on it in a way that it was shit. It wasn't shit. It was a standard match. It's just uh, nothing really stood out to him. It's like Orton did exactly what I expected him to do. Ali did all the flips and dives and like yeah. say caution to the wind and selling like I expected him to do, and I enjoyed it. And like I said, but the only thing that stood out was the ending. Yeah. Well, when there was the handstand RKO reversal, when he caught him in that RKO, it was just Orton sitting there taking like, his time. You know, it wasn't like, oh, that was a close one. It was like, okay, yeah, you got me with the reversal, but still I'm, I'm still here. I'm still, the, you know, kind of the vice. So, yeah, it was just, it was all right. Yeah, was, you know, it was, that I know for them it was the filler match, yeah. really. So, but uh, then was the women's tag title match. Yes, and out of all the tag title matches, I didn't expect this to be the one that was on there, but it was. Mm. Um, and again... I'm on two sides of It that, was really. a, just a bit... Meh. The only thing was the shock ending for me. Everything else kind of went as expected. I mean, Nikki looked reasonably strong in it. Uh, it was weird how Alexa was being face, although when she was backstage on the pre-show, she was being heel. Mm. And then out of nowhere, we've got the Kabuki Warriors working heel. That, yeah, which that was, was a bit weird. weird. I mean, weird. I'm not against it necessarily, because if it gives them that extra bit of flavour to give them a boost in their characters and going forward and everything and fine but I just didn't expect it well, I'm just looking to go it doesn't feel earned well from the opening bell you know they did that uh, uh, Kyrie went in for the handshake Nikki had took the handshake and that's when you know Kyrie took advantage so, so to me unless something's happened that I don't know about that was the initial heel turn but yeah. they were acting like this 
heel turn had been in play for a few weeks. Yeah. And that's it just sitting a little bit out of place, yeah. didn't it? So if they were going to do a heel turn, it, it would have made that and win the titles, so it would have made more sense to go in his face and do a dirty tactic to win. So mm. everyone's like, not only have we got new tag team champions, but they've become I mean, bitches kind of thing. Would you say it was a dirty tactic to what? I don't know what was a green mist. mist. Yeah. It's, uh, Hmm. I don't know because it's kind of part green of the mist, culture. It was a green mist and a kick, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, but she of... hasn't done the green mist. No, that's what I love she, about she that. Ever done it? I don't think she's ever done it. This it's is... a very tajiri thing, and it's. I think it's not illegal. It's kind of taboo. But of the fans, I, I don't know if the fans reacted in uh, or of. Oh my god, the green mist is back, or. Oh, the cheeky cow. Mm. But I, I don't know. I didn't see it as a heel thing. I just thought of I thought as cheeky. an awesome moment. Yeah. I mean, so like you said, they, they won the tag titles, which I'm fine with because I think they're a great tag team and I think they're incredible wrestlers and they need to be given something. So if this is what yeah. it is, that's fine. But you need to keep them built strong. Yeah. You've built these titles up a little bit more with Lex and Nikki Cross. you built so a little bit more credible now, as in they're on the show yeah. anyway. The other ones weren't. Yeah. Yeah. So they've put some credibility behind them keep that credibility going with the Kabuki Warriors build them up as this unstoppable force if you want them to be healed keep them healed not a problem yeah. but you need to keep them strong and keep those titles strong in, in the same as position. soon as they came out I just had that inner monologue of like it's so good to see these two back on television yeah, again um, and now that they've got the titles at least they're going to be there from week to week Yeah, I, I know what you mean with like it wasn't like a wrestling clinic but the kicks and the slaps were hard. Oh yeah, they're, they're all great. I'm, I'm not not taking anything away from that. Yeah, it's I, just I just thought this is more fight than wrestling, which I you know I kind of liked. It worked in this case for me. I love when Kyrie did the like the march to the side of the ring and just thought I'm going to poke with the arm yeah, here. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, so, true. yeah. Again, I, I enjoyed it, but maybe in hindsight I enjoyed it more because of the mist and the shock win. Yeah. But that, like I said, the, those bits are all fine. It's just that's the, again, it's like the autumn match. It, it's the only bits that stand out to me. Yeah, everything else was as advertised. Maybe, maybe it was a purpose thing for WWE of kind of going, yeah, okay, we know we've kind of dropped the ball here on what we got for this pay per view. But yeah, because when they announce like, oh, we're going to throw a tag title match on the show unannounced, it's kind of like a, well, it's a filler, it's yeah. and, and, and you just kind of presume it's yeah. going to retain. So to go, here's a match we were just thrown at you randomly. Oh, and by the way, they won new champions. Yeah, I like to be shocked in yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. I'm not, I'm not taking any away from the ending. I'm not taking. It, I'm, I'm not disappointed. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't mean shocked as in. Oh my god! Oh my god. It's just kind of like a. Oh, all right. Yeah, similar to like how Becky won. It was like it wasn't a. Oh fuck, Becky won. It was like oh, well done, love. Kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, next was the Viking Raiders with their surprise partner Braun Strowman versus the OC which this to me was kind of the the filler match of um, yeah. it was only there to do one thing it was to hype up this whole Tyson Fury um, Braun thing because yeah. he, he knocked him out with the punch didn't he yeah which I thought was a bit stupid however one thing I did love was AJ selling a bit afterwards oh, not sad. having a clue where he was and going, uh, it just looked completely out but couldn't stand on his feet I thought mate you are selling well, like an absolute when he, hero when he grabbed the ref thinking it was Luke yeah and, and they're going Brilliant. Sunday you <laughs> oh, I, I, I thought that was hilarious and honestly well done to AJ for, for doing that that was brilliant but think, yeah everything else was just kind of yeah, yeah I, I like the fact that, you know, he, some people could have argued, like, oh, well, if they, you want to get brought over with that right hand, he should have acted like he got proper knocked out, not made it comedic. I was like, no, I like the fact that... Yeah, he laid up quite a while before he got dragged up. Yeah, I just thought the punch, it either didn't connect properly or it didn't look like... Uh, at first it looked like he just kind of slapped him in the air. Right. And then it wasn't until AJ laid there, I was like... Was it? Oh, I see what they're doing. They're kind of going with the whole right hand of Braun because of Fury. Yeah. Um, so the match was okay. The Viking Raiders just their athleticism is yeah, amazing. It always, it always baffles me that kind of stuff. Like the, the agileness of uh, is it Ivar's the biggest one? Yeah, but both of them really. Well, yeah, but I'm saying Ivar's the biggest, and it just his like agileness just baffles. When me. everyone talks about the cartwheel, yeah, yeah. rightly so. He's diving through the ropes and stuff. Well, at one point he ran to the corner and kind of flipped over the yeah, corner and landed on the apron, and the commentators didn't even like um, you know, mention it. And they're like, "Do you know how impressive it is for a man size to be fluent? You make one wrong step, that's it, you're that, off. That's hard for a cruiserweight to do, let alone a guy of his size. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was just a. Yeah, it, it was, was a means to an end. Kind of it was like, a means to an end. Yeah, it was kind of like letting the fans. 
and remind people that here's Braun, we've got plans for him. Yeah. Um, and also, I think, a, a reason to have uh, AJ on the show, because... You know, AJ, well, yeah, not only is he AJ, but he's not his champion. And, you know, it's a not, it'd be interesting to annoy me that the US title since kind of ties begin to get seem overlooked the last month or so. Yeah. So they need to sort that out soon. Right, next was Chad versus King Corbin. Why are we having this match? I thought the match, the, the feud was over. And even once this match was over, they did a backstage segment and then he attacked him. I was like, well, this match, this feud is clearly continuing. I enjoyed everything that they did leading up to the the, the King of the Ring stuff and mm. Corbin winning and this whole stuff and everything. I'm a little bit annoyed with this shorty thing. I think it's a bit of a stupid gimmick. Yeah. But their feud themselves was great. This Chad overcoming and everything. Yeah. I just thought that the feud was over. But the, the fact that it wasn't, I'm just like, don't get me wrong, I'm all for Chad winning. I think that's nice, but that should have been the end of it. But the, and it wasn't. The, even the promo package beforehand was kind of showing, when it was going, this happened on Raw two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever. It's like, you've just shown in the promo packages they've already done this three other times. It's too much. But for, it's, it's different when a title's involved, but when it's just two guys going against it, you can't overdo it. No, because in a way as well, I mean, I think the reason they had uh, Corbin attack him afterwards to kind of uh, save him a bit of credibility, because now not only has he been owned by The Rock on SmackDown... Yeah, STD. Yeah, yeah, and now Chad's <laughs> beat him. You know, he's originally King of the Ring, and now you're still treating him like a bitch. Um, but I still like where Corbin is, yeah, So do I. And the match itself, again, wasn't a bad... Match no, as far as I, I would say it was a standard TV match. It was hard me. to get invested. I get what me. Yeah, yeah but I, was, I was watching it. I had. I was a, on the phone a lot on this match. Yeah, if I'm yeah, completely honest. But I thought of watching it. I was like, right. Not only could they have done a lot more with this. This is where they can go from the future. Why? You know, they could have carried on with Baron getting at him, niggling at him, the whole shorty thing. I did laugh when even the announcer announced that shorty game. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, is this, a this is actually a thing. thing. I don't know. But because um, even Cole was like, "That's disgraceful," of course he's like, "No, I'm not it." <laughs> <laughs> but um, they could have done a thing where Chad's like, "Right, I'm sick of this." You know, you're blah 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 blah. If you really are like the king that you say you are, put your crown on the line. Now, for added effect, what I've always said they should do. I've been saying this for years. The last time King of the Ring was like a, a pay per view, I made the big thing was when Lesnar won it in 2002. Mm. And the, the, it was well documented there, the winner of King of the Ring gets a top shot at SummerSlam. And I loved that idea. Now, what they can do now... now is just, it's just there for a fun story, more yeah, than anything. But now you don't... You know, I'm not saying they should bring it back to pay-per-view. If they do, great. It, it would save us from shit ones like Stomping Grounds. <laughs> but what they could do, just to give that extra oomph to, for fans, because I'm pretty sure they're getting rid of the Raw vs. SmackDown thing for Survivor Series this year, which I'm kind of happy about. Okay. With, with the draft happening next week, it's just going to get too complicated too quick, I think. It's going to be like, well, so, I know he's on SmackDown. Well, that's on the Raw. So, so what's the gimmick for Survivor Series? I, I don't know. Well, they'll, they'll, can't they'll, be a regular paper. Well, they'll probably have the traditional elimination matches, but they'll that's probably, it. yeah, they'll probably be, it'll be similar to what they're doing with Team Hogan and Flair. Kind of thing. Okay. That's the way it, always, it was in the past. But anyway, what they could do as soon as SummerSlam ends, they could let it be let it be known <laughs> that as soon as that ends on the following Raw, the SmackDowns, whatever, the Kingdom of Tournament starts and the final is a clash of champions because it kind of mixes yeah, in with that because they were going to do that and then they just backed out with the final rules. Like, yeah. yeah, you should have done a clash of champions because it kind of fits the theme of like gold and, and yeah. royalty and shit like that. But then, say, the, not only is he king of the ring, he gets a title shot at Survivor Series. A title shot of his choosing. Well, it's always going to be the world title. You, you mean Universal WWE? No, I mean any. Well, why would it go for a lesser well, title? It's up to you, because the, the, that way you, it's, it's not necessarily for a lesser title, but the point is it gives credibility to those titles if he I suppose to go with the intercontinental. Plus, it also gives the writers a bit more breathing space because they can go, well, where can we place him? Rather than forcing him into a title picture that we don't care about, yeah. you can put him into one that, that you go, OK, I can see a few continuing there. The, the way I see it... It keeps credibility for yeah, the titles. It could work, because I just thought if you do that, there's so many storylines you can do with the the King of the Ring thing between that point of the title shot because if that was the case with Baron and Chad Chad said I'll challenge you for the crown Chad automatically if 
would, in this case, have a tight match if he's choosing. And I think the fans would have been a lot more behind him because he's the underdog. Yeah. They were kind of behind him yeah, anyway. They were quite behind him. But with something on the line, yeah. say, for example, Corbyn had already let know, I'm King of the Ring and it's five series I challenge Seth for the universal title. I'm going to do what I have done. And Chad won, and you're like, whoa, Chad's got a title shot. That's mental. Yeah, true. But you can do that. You can continue the rivalry from the final if you want, if that that if that if story's working. You can do so many things with it. But it, instead, like you say, I've just gone, hey, cool, when he's a crown, make it your new gimmick. And yeah. that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, Chad won, and it was what, yeah, uh, yeah. entertaining to a degree, but not great. Yeah. Right, next was Charlotte versus Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Do you, do you want my honest opinion? I thought this was the worst match in the night. Boring. Yeah. That was the match when I was on my phone. It was boring. It was just, just nothing to it. The, um, it was weird how Bailey's technically the heel and Charlotte was technically the face, yet they were both kind of working heel in the ring. Yeah. It Not was, full on. I wouldn't say it was a full on heel thing, but Charlotte was working heel at certain points. I think Charlotte was kind of, she might have been doing the heel thing or might be embracing the dirtiest player in the game kind yeah. of thing. You know, she's a flair. But I don't know why. It, or maybe it's just the way, not not Charlotte as much, unfortunately, Bailey. I pretty much picked up my phone from the opening bell because I kind of knew this wouldn't be great. And, and amazing. We've seen it a couple of times. Yeah. Now. Well, we've seen it at the last pay per view. Um, I didn't really expect Charlotte to win. No, no, I'm shocked that Charlotte did actually win. Actually, because the you the, hot, the ten, the ton, the ten ton ton champion thing is a good story to build. You've just just chucked it onto a random pay per view. Yeah, ten time. That's that's a big deal. And you've just kind of chucked it away. Also, to a few that no one's really that bothered about. Yeah, and then they just after she buggered off, they just focused on Bailey a lot, having a little fucking crying right. sesh and they focus on it far too long it's like I, I'm so confused here yeah I like, was as well she's meant to be the heel Charlotte's meant to be the face yet they're both working heel in the match and then after it's over Charlotte walks off and saunters off like she's a heel and Bailey's sitting there crying like she's the face and I just I don't know where th- this is meant to go I'm so confused and it, like I shouldn't be confused yeah. and stuff like that. It should be like it should be black and white. That's the good guy. That's the bad guy. This is how things work. And it's just like you haven't. You've just muddled it all in together, made a boring match out of it. And at the end of it, you just kind of like. So her tenth title win just kind of fell so flat. Yeah, I, I think it's also when Bailey did the first kind of heel thing of like she tapped back with the chair and stuff. I was a little bit sceptical, but I spoke to my brother about it, and he said, I think the way they're trying to go is, you remember when Kurt Angle first came in? He was the, like the chipper, I'm the Olympic gold medalist, and you will love me, kind of thing. So we automatically hated him. Yeah. I think that's why Bailey was trying to go for, but it just wasn't working. So to me, I would have done the full-on heel, so even to the point of having the, the tube man there, and then right as she's going to raise you, you know what, no. Nah. And you know, paintain. No it'd be great if it was PG fourteen because instead of the tube, you could have middle fingers come up instead. Yeah. <laughs> or she could just do the whole <laughs> thing and, them and flip them off herself. Yeah. So yeah, just full on be like in the ring, like I always hated hugging your kids and, and that kind of stuff. Be full on heel. So when that did happen, where they're just focusing on her crying. Like I say, if it's an old school Kurt Angle and he's yeah, all laughing, there, right? they're all like, yeah, you deserve that, you wicked little done. bitch, because yeah. we fucking hate you. Yeah. This was more, they focused on that much, I'm like... They wanted sympathy or something. Yeah, and it I was just like, I don't care. As a character, you know, it, well, I was kind of beginning to feel sympathy for her, and I was sitting there going, I shouldn't know. I wasn't. I was sitting there going, why, no, no, why I mean, is this a If thing? I cared, I would have. Yeah. But I, that shouldn't be the point. But, yeah, it was one of just... I don't know, Bailey's kind of got it at a stale point. Maybe they have a plan to where... Because I think this Becky Sasha thing with Bailey and Charlotte isn't exactly over there. No, I think, think they're... They keep, like I said, the, I think I said it last time on the podcast, they're keeping the four horsewomen in each other's peripheral. Yeah. Just because I think they're slowly building up to potentially a four horsewomen match. Maybe it's Survivor Series, maybe it'd be Mania or Rumble or something, but I think they're keeping them around each other at certain points because they're going to slowly build to that I think yeah it wouldn't surprise me if Sasha and Bailey go full on snapped of like you know Sasha can do the whole story like I didn't come back for this and now if you thought I was angry uh, back then you should see me now and Bailey's now got some reason to be pissed off because she lost her title yeah because it's almost like the opposite of the way the fans thought it was going to go it's like Bailey's turned heel Sasha's back they're coming back to rule the roost now look at them no titles and Sasha's lost again 
which yeah. isn't I'm not, it's not really a complaint it's just like oh okay you could use it as a story if you need to yeah and I hope they do mm. uh, so yeah there's not really much else to say so yeah, yeah new, new, just, new, I'm not with Michan but yeah, I'm just I'm, I, it's lackluster I don't think there's any point of talking about the 24-7 stuff yeah that again just they they switched it out and Tamina won it for some shit and it saw, I think Russell talked about it and said Tamina's won a world title before Sami Zayn isn't that that's yeah. that. That is the present, isn't it? And then she got it. She she like got Funaki involved. I, was, like, I like that. Bit. <laughs> the thing about that is, it's like Funaki's normally in the middle, isn't he? When yeah. they're doing all the answers, like, and we're like, where's Funaki? And he's like, yeah, like, hey Funaki. And like, oh, that's why because they used him in this storyline. Yeah. And then she got rolled up again by our truth. But Kamina helped him, even though she yeah. took it off him a couple of weeks ago, and then they ran off. Just like again, I was like, I'm so confused. I think what is going on here? I think Kamala and Truth are always going to see each other as like the co-holders. I think that might be why. But God, it it just as far as this com- one just seems a bit stupid to me. As far as it was the funny and stupid, the commentator things go. Fair enough. You know, you're expanding to different countries, and you should. You know, the bigger the better. But it's sometimes to the point of, like, you don't have to show us all the time because it eventually is going to get to, now we go over to the Scousers. <laughs> yes. Now the Northerners. And like, I, who I, else is there? I do, I do like them. I hope they keep Funaki and what's his face at the end. Because oh. that's, well, the that's the one I always look forward to. As soon as he's there, like, Funaki! Yeah, we know Funaki, yeah. so it's all cool. But yeah, but right, yeah. this is where it's kind of, in my head, I thought, right, it was so, going so well. Yeah, main event thing. time. Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt for the Universal Championship Inside Hell in a Cell. I'm going to let you go first because mm. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. I'll, You're going to run, yeah. Yeah, I've got. I've got some fucking problems. But maybe I should go with the pros first because it's a shorter list. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bray, I like the fact that Bray came out with the the headlamp lantern again. Yeah. Uh, I. It did get a little bit. Just not distracting uh, uh, later on, but I like the fact that the whole match was under that eerie like red light, very old Kane esque. Uh, not me, not so much. Uh, it, just, uh, it didn't have to, but I thought, all right, try something new. Mm. <sighs> right, I like the fact that it wasn't just pure dominance by Bray, but saying that, he didn't get as much offense in, offense in, uh, offense in as I thought he should. Mm. At first, I began liking the fact that, you know, the weapons didn't affect him. And yeah. to a degree, I still do. But when all those weapons start coming in and about, I don't know, six, seven curb stops, whatever, and still kicking out at one, shocking to a good perspective. But I was like, well, now you've just established that there's no man alive, really, that can beat him unless he has a gun. Because it's it's... It has to be a line of that's too much. There has to be some sort of believability. Yeah. Um, so I, I liked what the fiend was doing when he was on the offence. I was invested in the sense, as was the crowd, of like when they began booing stuff, like not you, not you, Seth. This is not what we want. I, even though I watched it alone with that sledgehammer ladder chair thing right at the end, and as soon as the bell rang, I just yelled, "What?" Yeah. So did I. What the fuck? But then I recoiled a bit of like, because at first I was like, is he disqualifying him? And then I found out he didn't. He just stopped the match, which means my thing is correct. I went with no contest. Yeah. And I was like, boom, point for me. But what the fuck? This is bullshit. Because to me, Hell in the Cell is kind of... Anything goes. Yeah, it's no holes barred, which yeah. means nothing can nothing stop it. Nothing can stop you. And yet he did. And then, now, as far, the plan itself was shit. What I will give is the way it was executed, despite how shit the plan was, was fine. Uh, because not, When Bray popped up, not only was I was thinking, well, he's fine. He didn't have to stop the fucking match. Yeah, why why didn't he do that earlier? Yeah. He could have done that earlier, fucked the shit out of him, and then taken the fight. He was obviously playing possum kind of thing, unless you got over to him. Because, yeah, I like the fact that you could hear the, the ref saying to Seth, like, what are you doing? You're going to kill this guy. If he'd always said to him, like, He's knocked out. I'm thinking about stopping this match now, just pin him now or whatever, and then Seth went with it. It still wouldn't have been great, but it would have been more like, if Bray's knocked the fuck out, what the fuck? But when Bray shot up, I love how the fucking, the medics, the ref, they just scatter like cockroach of fear. I like that. 
Uh, and the blood capsule, it was obviously a blood capsule, yeah, with the mandible claw, was okay, but the most entertaining part of that match was the hearing the crowd's chants. I mean, they were chanting. Refund is a bit extreme because the rest um, of the show was okay. Restart the match. Restart the match. AW. AW. Bullshit. Yeah. It um, just. Right. It was going quite swimming. I mean, you've, you, you've kind of covered a lot of what I wanted to say, but I suppose I just. You just give your opinion, yeah. I, I think it was one of the stupidest booking decisions that Vince has decided to make. He's he saw what was going to happen. He knew what would happen if he decided to do this, and he fucking did it anyway. Mm. There was no other outcome of that match than Bray Wyatt taking that title from Seth. Seth's time is up. We don't need him with the title anymore. He's had it long enough. Someone needs to take it off him. You have built this Bray Wyatt fiend character up so well over the last few months, mainly because Bray's just been allowed to go off on one and do it himself. But it's been built to a point where that legitimately is the reason that the person that can take it away from set. Yeah. And then you just go and fucking take... You destroy everything in that match. Yes, it started off quite hot with the no-selling, and yes, kicking out of one, I was quite shocked at that. I was like, fuck, they really are building him here. Yeah. But then they just ruined it by having him being absolutely annihilated by Seth. Seth getting booed the shit out of when they want to keep him his face. Bray Wyatt being just laid, laid out for such a long time. Yeah. And... And then being fucking the match being thrown out because he uses sledgehammer. It makes no sense. Mm. It's just Vince just knew what was going to happen. It was such a stupid idea. It just it made no sense to me. Is. And I know it ended with this mandible claw with the blood and everything. That was all fine and whatnot. But it shouldn't have ended in no contest. It was the main event, and you have built these characters up to this point. There's no. My, my point is, you shouldn't have backed yourself into this fucking corner, like. If you're going to do this, you need to have Bray win. If you didn't have any intention of Bray winning, you shouldn't have booked the match. You should have put someone else in that cell and left it for another time. You shouldn't have done it. We all agree it was too soon for Bray to be going going for a title match, but he did it anyway. So, well, if you're going to do it, you need to capitalise and actually do it properly. And he didn't do that. And there was another thing that got on my fucking nerves as well, was the fact that I found out that apparently Vince was laughing off. The, the end of the match like laughing off the crowd's reaction like it wasn't a big deal to him it's just like you are so fucking deluded it is unreal everybody is screaming for this character that you have built up as Bray Wyatt and the Fiend and then you just screw it over and in the same position you get your biggest baby face to be hated even more than he already is at the moment because he's been controversial at best yeah. And you've made it ten times worse by doing this the way you've done it. I guarantee when I'm watching Raw tonight, he's going to be booed the shit out of. Apparently there's even rumours that the rematch has been cancelled. I, I, I don't think it should be a I'm, I'm anyway. sorry about this rant, but th- this was one of the worst main events I've ever had in my life. I guess I get there were certain spots in it that were shocking. Yeah. But overall, I thought to myself, this is bullshit. It is absolute bullshit. Every single chant from those from those people was, was warranted as far as I'm concerned. M- maybe and yeah. I just I don't get where Vince's head is at, and I don't know how he managed to fucking get away with it because I it baffles me how he thought this was a good idea. The Idiot. only the only chant I wouldn't have agreed with is the refund, and le- unless the the rest of the show beforehand was just as shit as that. Then yeah, maybe it was. Yeah, I mean, you can't just fine, rely really. on the main. I know it's the main. I'll, re- I'll retract that, but every other chant was fucking. Yeah, they were granted. Yeah, um, especially this week. Of all the shit that's been going on this week, all the wrestling that we've had mm. outside of WWE as well, we've had some great stuff with NXT and AEW, and this is the time you choose to do something this stupid. Yeah. You just like you, you. You just think, think carefully. You're the last person to have a wrestling Same. content for yeah. this week. You're the end of this week of wrestling. It's one of the biggest weeks of wrestling we've ever had. And some of this stuff wasn't WWE based. And they did really well with their first week. Mm. And you're the last thing of the week. You need to end on a good note. And you end it like that on a character that we all love so much and fuck it up so spectacularly. What were you thinking was going to happen? What did you like? People, of course, are going to chant AEW. Of course, they're going to chant bullshit. You you fucked it up so, so the bad. Way, the way I looked at it is like. The, the only solace I get from it is, uh, you know, with the first brain match, because I, I get why... I was worried that Seth was just going to win at first. Because I was thinking, Bray has built him up, himself up as this amazing character mm. purely through mainly the Firefly Funhouse. Because he only had, like, one other match against Finn. Yep. And let's face it, that was a crush match. But this... 
maybe a little bit too much, but I still liked it. The punishment he was taking shows him as a monster. And yeah. I like that. I, I, I agree. I do like that. The execution but as of the match. But as you've said before, I think they went too heavy with yeah, it. Yeah, they might. They went so heavy with it. We're like, oh, well, he kicked out of seven curb stomps and a pedigree and a fucking hit with a ladder and all his chairs and everything. I was like, if he can kick out of that, some of the kickouts were at one, like you said. Then who's going to take him down? Yeah, yeah, other than Brock Lesnar with one F five. I, like, it just, it's, I think it's, it's stupid. They might. The way I, I try and look at it because you know you always you got your fingers crossed. But if Vince was laughing, it's either a, a kind of oh shit, I fucked up. No, apparently he was but, laughing it off, laughing off the chance like it was no big deal. Yeah, but that's like, yeah, like laughing it off like oh I'll laugh it off because I know I fucked up. Or no, he's laughing it off. This is the best. reaction he wanted, which. But why would, you want, want, why would you want that reaction? Uh, uh, unless <laughs> he wants, unless something becomes perfectly clear in the next you know, week or so that is like, I wanted Seth to be healed, I wanted this reaction because, which off the top of my head, I can't think of it, so I'm probably wrong. Yeah. But with Bray, what they did with the whole taking, you know, like the punishment for the weapons and stuff, and the, the finishes, I was like, this is really smart because in a way... You've established a new Undertaker without ripping off the Undertaker character. Because well, the Undertaker's big thing, especially in the early days, was every bit you threw at him, he'd just get right back up. And it's made me think, are they actually going to go with Bray Taker? Uh, well, mainly, mainly, which yeah. I'm, I'm all for. Because but as long as it, Bray will destroy Yeah, him. he needs to go over, and if that's the Taker's last match, then fair enough, I'm all for that. Yeah. But they have got some serious damage control to do. Yeah, because from you this match, if um, if you didn't want Bray as champion, you shouldn't have booked the match. End of story. If Bray from the like, get go, if it's a Taker match, has control, you're thinking, what the fuck? Suddenly, like Taker does the sit up, starts his little comeback thing, like does like big boots, snake eyes, all the stuff. But it, you know, because of his age, he's, he begins to show that he's a little bit exhausted. Hits the tombstone, but you know, kind of recoils a bit because doesn't go straight for that crucifix pin thing he does. And pretty much straight off the bat, Bray just pops back up in the spider position mm-hmm. of like after all that and a tombstone, I'm right back up, and then proceeds to just end Taker. It, it might work, but uh, yeah, as far as the cell match goes, uh, I, the, the mallet. I right? mean, the, the mallet was fine. It was fine until he hit him with a handle. <laughs> yes. What's the point? Yeah. We know it's kind of probably this paper mache thing anyway, but. If you've got a giant mallet, don't go, look at the size of this thing. Here's a jab. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? So, this, yeah. this was a massive fuck you to the fans, in my opinion. It really was. See, I'm, I'm thinking of the overrating here now. But, uh, this is difficult, because thinking about this earlier, up until, right, up until the last match... I was thinking about giving it a generous eight, but after that, I thought I'll probably go seven and a half. But now we spoke about it. I mean, I, I still stick with my opinions. Like I thought for what, like I say, for what the pay per view was, with majority of the matches being unannounced, mm. they did okay. Uh, I know Corbin and, and Cable and Orton and Ali weren't like match of the year candidates, but I thought they were quite solid. They have the shocking women's tag title thing. Six man was okay. Um, and then unfortunately you had like, you know, the, the shitty smack the women's title matches. But the first two matches, I enjoyed that much that might carry most of those points. And up until the ending, uh, the, yeah. the way that the, the main event ended, the match itself I was kind of enjoying up until that. So what are you going to give it then? <sighs> I think I'll give it a very generous seven and a half. Okay. Well, like I said, I enjoyed Becky Sasha. Incredible match. Yeah. One of the best matches I've seen in a long time. Really yeah. impressed. I, enjoyed the I did enjoy the tornado. That was quite good. Everything else was just kind of meh for me. And then the main event was such a massive fuck you to the fans, as I've said. Such a, a sore point for but me. But only at that, the bell, when the bell rang. <laughs> yeah, but... Or did you enjoy the match? Before? The match was just okay. But right, okay. there was shocking moments in it, little pieces, like he's kicking out at one and just uh, him being dominated. But then once Steph started to take over and everything, it was just kind of like, for God's sake, it's like I'm not getting enough back and forth here. Yeah. And it wasn't enough for me. Um, it wasn't enough for me to keep invested. And right. yeah, the ending just fucked me off so much that... Um, 
you kind of rage quit the pay per view. Yeah, most of these points are going to Sasha and Becky, and I'm I'm going to give it a five. Right. Okay. I, I can't give it more than that, and I would say three of those points are going to back uh, Becky and Sasha. Yeah. Two of the points for go for the rest of the pay per view. Uh, I'm, I'm just not happy. I'm not. Ha- I know they didn't do much time, but I'm sorry. If that's the case, then don't have the fucking pay per view that close to yeah. this redo. Spread yourselves out. Think ahead. Plan ahead. You're a massive fucking company. If you're going to have a fucking pay per view that close to all this rebrand and redoing and everything, put the time in or don't fucking do it. It's the same thing with the Bray thing. Don't put him in the match if you don't intend him on winning because you're just going to fuck the character off and piss everybody off. Why would you want to piss your fans off? It, the amount of people you've probably had cancelled the network now because of that. Oh yeah, I know some people at my work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insulting it's just ridiculous and I, I can't wait for Vince to be gone so Triple H can take over <laughs> what, what? every single time we feel like we're getting somewhere like, there's a little bit of freshness a little bit of an update and everything we're getting something like that up, they yeah. suddenly just do a fucking 180 and throw you off the road yes yeah. It's getting fucking an MO of WWE lately. It's just, they tease you with things you like, and then suddenly they go, no, we can do this instead. So, Joel, just as you probably might have known if you are fans of this, as you might have noticed, that we didn't do an all out AEW podcast because, you know, we're just tired and we've got other stuff. Yeah. But recently, Moxley was in an interview and he said he just loves wrestling, uh, not just AEW, but wrestling uh, again at the minute because of what they're doing. Other businesses, uh, companies are reacting. And yeah. he didn't name names, but it's like, for instance, some people bring back Pyro, and you know, fans are getting yeah. excited. Again, I didn't. I like the fact they're bringing back Pyro yeah. and smoke and everything. That's so all he was kind of like saying, like, I'm excited. What was that? I thought, I thought my phone went off. There. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of excited in the sense of right. You know, we're, 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 we're making it competition. We're making them step up their game. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee a lot of the AEW guys probably watched Tanner and Sale this like, right, you know, we had a great premiere, but they're going to step up their game now. Let's see what they got. And they watched that show and thought, yeah, well, we've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. You know, because... <sighs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to shit on WWE straight away and go. You know what? I'm now an AEW fan. It hasn't. No, got I'm, that not, I'm not. Yet. I'm not saying that's what company. I am. I yeah, want I both to succeed. Yeah, I do. The more wrestling, the better. Yeah, to a degree, because you know, like we say, have lives. We have so much content. We, so need, we need to slow down. Trying to find lives. But, I mean, if right, just to quit. I know this is like you said. It's become a rant. If they want, really wanted to make it no contest, which I still think to a degree would have annoyed. Uh, fans, but maybe not to the, the degree it did. Would that sell? There's so much possibility for a huge spot to take them both out. And in, just off the top of my head now, which, you know, not blowing smoke up my own ass, but I think is better, they could have gone out the cell, Seth could have started climbing up, Bray after him, and Bray on the, the side of the cell could have put the mandible claw in. And it was like, what the fuck's going to happen? And Seth just grabs Bray by the head and throws him and Bray off the side of the cell through a commentator table. Big holy shit moment. The ref checks them both, has to call for the medics. And still no contest. Still no still contest. Not great. No. But better than but I would have accepted that more. Yeah, because now they're just. Yeah, I, I'm really confused what they've done with Seth. He's going to get booed. Yeah, because now it's just. You know, the fact that, that even they had... Uh, the ref's lines are obviously written by Vince as well. The fact that they had the ref saying, you're going to kill him, you're going to kill yeah, him, yeah, and then which is like, still bollocks. Then he was like, don't do such a I mean, this is not who you are. It's like, mate, he's just threw chairs, tables and ladders all over his face, threw a tool, toolbox and beat the shit out yeah. of his head. But the sledgehammer's too far. Yeah. Bullshit. Oh, but it's okay for Triple H to do it. No, about Triple H is perfectly okay to do it. That's his patented thing. Yeah. But no, it's too far for said. No, it isn't. He stabbed his fucking shield brethren in the back and went heel for over a year. Right. That's not too far for said. If he has to go to that dark place to win, what's the problem? I think it's obvious to everyone. A, I'd rather get hit in the head with a sledgehammer with a ladder and a chair in between my head than just hitting the head with a sledgehammer because yes I would be dead but like you say Triple H has been doing it for 20 years not only is no one dead yet but a match hasn't been stopped and the fact that you didn't stop the Mankind Hell in the Cell match oh, all the shit he went yeah. through and yet you're like oh fuck we better stop this it's oh sledgehammer too far too yeah. far come on uh, yeah, it's like uh, t- t- tooth sticking out your nose, fell off the cell and through the cell. You're good to go. Cool, yeah, right, yeah. okay. But. Uh, some Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, 
This is, I know it's like, well, it well. Don't touch it the right way. Is there a sledgehammer? Oh, no, you can't use that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll put the mallet down. Yeah, you put the mallet down. Jesus, you don't know. You might want to poke someone's eye out. It's just <laughs> stupid. It's very, I'll tell you something. I'm really looking forward to it. I know we won't watch it live, unfortunately, but it's AEW tomorrow night. So I'm really yeah. looking forward to see what they pull out of the bag. So, yeah, how did the sale done? Yeah. Seven and a half out of five. A hell of a run going off. I'm not happy. But you're unfortunately still champ. Yeah, I am. I am yeah. still champ. Yeah, but there wasn't much to predict. There wasn't much to predict. But I, I think yeah. I'm even with Amy now. So I think the next tra- championship thing. No, I think two point ten now. Am I? Yeah, because. <laughs> you well, I didn't know that. All the all, you went. I was one point ahead before. You went with all the matches, the same matches, oh, apart just... from Harper and Rowan. Also, uh, the the NXT thing. Tyler Breeze was there. That counts as an NXT. Well, I, I was also thinking, don't the Street Profits count? I suppose, that? but they're always there. But even if they weren't, well, what Tyler Breeze, Tyler Breeze, Breeze was? Because uh, I asked you. Sorry, this is breaking my personal. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I asked on the, our Facebook page, like, do Street Profits count as NXT? And no one responded. I forgot. And then they turned up. Was like, oh shit! Yeah. And then. Their names popped up in the NXT name tag, but well, that's it. That's, that's my but, point. But down look, the look, luckily, Tyler Breeze appeared, so that counts, yeah, that counts yeah, as NXT. I suppose, yeah. So, so yeah, go. that's a little sell done. Now, how long we got to? Was it Crown Jewel next? Uh, yeah, that's on a Thursday. Yeah, so uh, we're hoping uh, maybe on a Friday we can get it done. Yeah, it's Halloween. And it's right. for us UK fans. If for them, it starts at one PM. So I think for us UK fans, it's like a seven o'clock start. Oh, right, okay. Which is quite nice. Mm. You know, can watch that and go to work the following Friday. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, we'll see you in, in a few weeks. You know, like, subscribe, and uh, let us know what you thought of Hell in a Cell. I'm pretty sure you thought it was as shit as I did. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> see you a bit. See you a bit. Bye.